Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be installing MS-DOS 7.1. Um, why would you be installing MS-DOS 7.1? Well, I actually like it more than 6.22. I also like the mouse support with it, the out-of-the-box CD-ROM support. So if you want to install certain things that are CD-based like Doom, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's also a little bit different. I feel it's actually well built. It's also the last edition of DOS that was created. So, again, as I always say, why not install it? What else do we got to lose? It only takes a few minutes. Um, so, let's get started here. First thing we're going to do is click on New Virtual Machine. Now, you're going to choose the typical. And then, like always, we will choose an operating system later because it's not a disk based operating system. All right, guest operating system is other, and we're going to set it to version MS-DOS. All right, we're going to name the virtual machine to MS-DOS 7.1 because I enjoy doing it, but you can name it whatever you want. You can just keep it as the default, MS-DOS, if you have no other DOS installed as a virtual on your system. All right, again, I leave the minimum disk size alone, and I hit store virtual disk as a single file always. Again, as a rule of thumb, anything under 32 gigs, I usually keep as a single. Um, actually, anything under 8 gigs. Sometimes, like 16 gigs, depending on what it is, um, it may freak out. I know everything about Vista, I always leave it as, as separate disks. Um, but again, you can do either or. It really doesn't matter because you'll never build it up big enough to have to worry about it splitting the multiple files. So, click Next. Then we're going to click Finish. All right, and again, we're going to have to add a floppy drive because it does not come with a floppy drive. So we're going to edit this virtual machine, go to Add, and then we're going to add a floppy drive. All right, now once it's been added, we're going to go to Use Floppy Image File, click Browse. Again, it opens up to the default directory of virtual machines, so I'm going to go to wherever my installs are, so ISO for me. MS-DOS 7.1 and we're going to mount disk number one. Alright, now it's been mounted so let's go ahead and launch the virtual. This one's a pretty quick installer. It's a lot different than MS-DOS 6.22 um, as you can notice, MS-DOS 622 can have three to four floppies, as this only has two. Um, so, yeah. So, here's your welcome screen. Now, as you can see here, uh, I have a cursor that works, and it's great. But if you still want to use the tabs, they still work as well. So, we're going to click Next for here in the welcome screen. It's just telling you that what DOS is used today, what kind of, um, if supports large disks, it's... FAT32, as well as before it used to be FAT16 and 12. Pretty much this is all useless information. So we're just going to click Next. All right, again, this is the license agreement, so hit Next. Now it's going to check to see if you have a partition, which you don't. So when you hit Continue, it's going to start the formatting process. Yes, we want to create a primary partition of FAT32, 16, or 12. And now we're going to reboot. All right, it's going to go ahead and reboot itself. All right, now it goes to the same process it just did. So here's the welcome screen again. This is explaining to you the partitioning and the license agreement. This is going to check for partitioning again. So it kind of pretty much just redoes it again uh, when it reboots to do the formatting. All right, so now everything's already been formatted. No errors have been found. Now, do you want to create an MBR? Of course we do. Again, you can pick whatever you want. So if you want to call it MS-DOS or 7.1 or just 7.1, you can. Um, I always leave it as default. So we're going to click Next once you're satisfied with your destination. Always tells you it doesn't exist, so hit Yes. Now, for here, you can pick two things. Uh, you can do command prompt only, 
which just requires this disk. Minimum, which you really don't want to do if you've never used DOS. Or again, for the full experience, let's do, you can go with the two disks. The full experience kind of gives you more, again, mouse support, CD support right off the bat, um, extra drivers, and a few other different like auto exec bat memory fixes. But in this case, we really wouldn't need a lot of that because the virtual machine goes ahead and takes care of all those. So on this screen, the only thing we have to do is take install add-ons off. And the reason being is because I actually don't have that CD or that disk. Um, so if somebody has that disk and would like to send it to me so I can do a video on how to do the add-ons, that would be awesome. Uh, if not, I'll just keep my eyes out until I actually find a, a copy of that somewhere. So we're going to click on Next. All right. This is asking you if you want to install Access DOS, which pretty much installs very useful tools. Um, I don't know how often you're going to use this, but for all intents and purposes, of course we're going to add it because, like always, why not? So this is just a confirmation page letting you know you're installing DOS. It's a full installation. We're putting Access DOS with all utilities on there. And no, I cannot put add-ons in. So we're going to click OK to start. And then like before, compress Control Alt and that releases your mouse. Go down to the bottom here to your little floppy. And we're going to have to pick Disk 2 now. Hit OK. So now these are all just basic customizations that are coming up right now. So do you want to see the DOS screen? I like it. I always like seeing the splash the splash screens for all the old versions of Windows and stuff like that. So if I'm able to actually get them, I click yes. Um, this is one you let you know if you can create a boot log file, okay, which gives you some proper information. Uh, I don't know how useful it is for us, but if you're ever trying to learn how to use DOS, it is good to install this. So at least you kind of know if you ever encounter a DOS computer, you know that you can look at the boot log text for DOS uh, startups and see if there's a problem with it. Um, so in my case, I always hit yes. All right. Then again, this is another thing for DOS doesn't always support long file names or it didn't until this release came out. Um, so if you're going to put Windows 3.0 and above on here, you're going to want to create that, um, you know, this, this file, this file extension. So in my case, I always hit yes, because it's not a big deal for us that we hit no either. But again, I don't want to, if I happen to use this and for some odd reason, I do want to give this out to somebody who's actually going to use this for 3.0 and above. I kind of want my DOS to be ready to go for just about anything they can run into. So we're going to hit yes for this. This is kind of pointless because um, this, this is very specifically based for software, um, your upper memory block and your extended memory, um, as well as your EMS, which, uh, again, it, it only requ this is only required for a certain processor, certain RAM and memories that allow this. And in all reality, it's not going to affect you. Um, but you do want to enable them because if you do install soft, like your virtual machine here can understand the, uh, the UBMS and EMS. Um, so in that case, you're going to want to enable it because if you do install software that requires, you know, those to be enabled, you don't have to go back through this whole setup and redo all this. Um, it's just always train for thought, but you don't have to load it. You don't, you can just enable the upper memory, but I always do both um, because you never really know. Same thing with this. It says it can run your DVD ROM and CD ROMs and everything through this. It either can just load the driver itself or actually load the entire thing from boot. I always click load both because me, I always put CDs in here to load Doom or other old style games. Same thing with floppy drives. I, I don't want any kind of problems where I have to go ahead and run the you know the driver the driver loader every single time. Like here it says that I have to run MSCDEX when DOS starts every time to start it. No, I'd rather just load it now. I have the space. I have obviously the RAM and everything else and the hardware to do it. So this is just kind of, if you don't hit, you know, load both, it's just, a, you're just, you know, wasting more time. Um, this is however you want to use it. 
I usually leave it as default because I haven't really figured out much more or less for what I want to use it for. But it does give you, as you can see, mouse support, okay, long file name support, file sharing support if you want, which you're not going to do much with, but if you do, you have the option. Okay, disk cache doesn't really require anything because you're, you're using probably an SSD today. So you don't got to worry about speeding up drives for this. Your, your hard drives can handle it. So you can hit use default, which is this it, or continue. This is asking you what kind of language we're going with here. I usually just pick the default. But again, if you fall in under any one of these other ones here, you're more than welcome to use them. And congratulations, we're all done. So at this point here, we click OK. Would you like to reboot now? I hit no. And again, the reason why I hit no is because it doesn't let you eject the floppy right away in virtual machine. You have to kind of turn it off for it to release itself. So I run the shutdown code, which I forgot does not work yet. So we go control alt and then we just hit shutdown up here. Edit the virtual machine. And then we hit use physical device for your floppy just to disconnect the floppy at the moment. Click power on. Again, if you happen to see this saying that your floppy is not connected, you're going to hit yes because I want it to try every time I power it on. And there we go. So now we just check the directories. You can see seven ones in there. And to find out very easily, I hit shutdown, which I guess don't spell correctly. So you hit shut down, you have the options to shut down, restart, or cancel. So that kind of tells me I know 7.1 is installed over 6.22 because 6.22 doesn't have this feature. Um, now, again, as we were saying before, we want to go ahead, we can install Doom to test out the CD support, as it says, as I said, it was native before. Okay. Now mine's already mounted. Hit OK. And I don't remember what it is. Yep. Install the BAT. C drive. Doom. Yes. Boom. Ready to go. So we're going to do keyboard and mouse because I have both. No music. No sound effects because I don't want to hear the, the terrible scratching sound of everything. And just because I want to be able to shoot the thing once. Save. And let's do this. New game. Now again, I turned the sound off, so it is very scratchy. But as you can see here, I am playing Doom. Not the best resolution or the screen here at the moment, but you can always change that in the settings. But as you can see here, I am playing Doom. Not very well, but I am playing it. And just like always, just to show that we went ahead and gonna beat the game real quickly, the first level. And there we go. Speed run. But there you have it. This is how you install MS-DOS 7.1 on VMware Workstation or VMware Player. So if you like the video, just hit the like down there. If you want to subscribe to see more videos coming up, I'm going to do my best to produce as many videos as I can in virtual machines. Um, I do have a list of ones I want to do now, which is literally going to be Windows 1, 2, 3, 311, XP, 2000, ME, NT, Literally every version of Windows ever created, I plan on making a virtual machine of, as well as some Linux, some Mac that's not supported. Um, I'll show you how to put Mac on your computer that's not allowed by VMware through patching, um, as well as if you want to learn the higher end stuff like ESXi um, and vCenter and vSphere, 
no problem. I have be able to do videos on that as well as how to network virtual machines together, share data between the two of them, share data between your host files. So yeah, if you're really interested, keep on coming back, taking a look at this. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much.